Hey, good morning, church. Thank you for joining us this morning, and I hope you're having a beautiful day. Uh, just a couple things to think about real quick and just talk about as we get into our, our message for today. We're back in Philippians, and this is going to be exciting. Chapter 3, we're like halfway through. We're going to blast through the last half in the next uh, several weeks, and that's going to be good. So um, get ready. Start maybe read through Philippians a couple times just to get back on board with that. A um, couple other things I just want you to be aware of. Uh, we've uh, started receiving updates from GIFT about the money we sent to Malawi, and that's exciting. The well that you guys are paying for has uh, been dug, and, and so they're getting fresh water, which is just amazing. And with that, what I want you guys to understand or just kind of think about, when we talk missions here at uh, the First Baptist Church, what I want you to see is that we, we care about the people on the other side of the world, like Malawi. Man, that's important. And international missions, we love that. But, but it starts here with us right? Like Acts 1-8, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so we want to be an amazing church. And I tell you, our goal is not, not First Baptist being the best church. Um, it's not. We're about kingdom growth. But we want to be an amazing church. Amen? And then we want to reach out into our city with uh, things like church planting and Anchor South. And we, we're, we're helping with that. And maybe with uh, The Rock at Noonday and trying to get more involved with that. And then maybe go a little bit further out and, and uh, statewide and, and, and North America. So our goal here is to have like these concentric circles that are getting bigger and bigger from right here at the First Baptist Church to the uttermost parts of the world. And so look for the updates on our Facebook page. And uh, we're going to try to get some in our online bulletin, too, so you guys can just see what's going on. The, uh, the next thing I want to just really talk to you about uh, quickly, um, two more things. The second thing is, is this is just a really great time for us to regroup. The COVID is not going away, y'all. It, it's going to be here for a while. And so we've got months ahead of us where things are going to be kind of slower. And what I mean by slower is we've got a lot to do, but this is a great time for us just to turn inward to our, ourself uh, personally and as a group to look after one another, to uh, regroup, rebuild, and just when, when COVID's over and we're out there, we'll just, man, go off like a shot and it's going to be amazing. And so uh, start maybe refocus on prayer, Bible reading, connect with somebody, be there for one another, build stronger roots during this time. Don't let COVID get you down. Speaking of COVID, third thing, listen, if you have any issues with COVID or what's happening here at the church, uh, I'm the guy to talk to. So come talk to me and just let me know. And I will talk to you, work with you. I will listen and we'll get through it together because uh, we're all in this together. Amen. Hey, I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to have a great service as we worship the Lord and music and then study of the word. God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the fellowship we share in him. God, I just pray that as we study, as we sing, you'd open our hearts to hear, to hear you speak. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. of the Son of Man. Rumors of the Son of Man. Stories of a Savior. Holiness with human hands. Treasure for the traitor. my 
maker, you're my author, my maker, my ransom, my savior, my refuge, my hiding place. You're my helper, my healer, my blessed redeemer, my answer, my saving grace. You're my hope.
Hey, good morning. We're back. Philippians chapter 3. Today, we're going to rejoice because we know Christ. And what a, man, a great passage. Uh, we've, we've been kind of taking a break from Philippians to talk about missions for a little while. Today, we get back in Philippians, and um, Paul is, is looking to him. He's, he's got this, this idea today where he wants us to learn, right, that our confidence should be in Jesus Christ, not in our flesh, like not in our works. And, and the way he begins in chapter 3, he says, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. And he wants them to rejoice in the Lord uh, because there's dogs out there, like bad teachers. People are going to come against them. And he's like, guys, rejoice in the Lord. Even though there's all this trouble in life, Jesus Christ is what you have your confidence in. The reason that gives us a point for joy is that, uh, listen, you don't have to be good enough for Jesus. Like, you're good enough just the way you are, just the way I am. We rejoice because we know Christ. And listen, knowing Christ, that's, that's where it's at. This is our big idea. Only Jesus saves. Only Jesus saves. That's what's true. And the reason that's important is because if we start to put our confidence, our, our efforts in other things, we forget only Jesus saves. And if that's true, therefore, what do we do? I will seek Jesus first. And the point, the big idea is, is Paul really talking to us and he's saying, Guys, listen, I know that you're tempted to try to like, like muscle your way to the top or pull yourself up by your bootstraps or go out and you think like, we, we as a church do this sometimes. We're going to be an amazing church because, because we're helping with a church plant or something. Listen, I, we do that, but that's not what our confidence is in. Our confidence is in Jesus Christ because only Jesus saves. And it doesn't matter how many churches we plant. It doesn't matter how many people we um, tell about Jesus. What matters most is that Jesus saves. And if that's true, we seek Jesus first. And when we seek Jesus first, listen, everything else flows out of that. You know, you know why we uh, want to plant churches or why we want to help international missions? Why we want to have excellent worship here in our own walls? It's because we seek Christ first and we want to glorify him. And so today then our text, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 3, uh, reads like this. Finally, my brothers... Rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me, and it is safe for you. Look out for the dogs. Look out for the evildoers. Look out for those who mutilate the flesh. Because we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself, Paul says, I myself have many reasons for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss. Ooh, verse 7. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss of the, for the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I've lost all things, and I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of of faith. I want to know Christ. Yes, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and may share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Amen and amen. May the Lord add to the blessing of the reading of his word. And so again, big idea, only Jesus saves. Therefore, because only Jesus saves, therefore, I will seek Jesus first. And I, I just want you to, man, I want you to think about the way Paul, as he writes, he's like, I want to, to know Christ. Do you see what, what Paul is doing? He's like, Jesus matters more than anything. There's, there's all this stuff right now that's going on in my life and in yours, but I want to know Christ most. Yes, the power of the resurrection, the participation in his suffering, I will seek Jesus first. So today, four things we're going to talk about. Rejoice because you know Christ, right? First, watch out for the dogs. And let me just say, when he talks about dogs, he's not saying, oh, like little fluffy. I know you love your little puppy dog. That's not this dog. These are the bad, violent, killing kinds of dogs, wild dogs. Don't be a dog. Don't act like a dog. 
And I like the way what Paul does. He's like, hey, there's guys out there, and they're trying to, to uh, deceive you because they have confidence in the flesh, and um, they, they, they look just amazing, and you want to be like those guys because they look so cool. Well, if any of those guys look cool, Paul says, I look just as cool. Like, I could put my confidence in that. You know, um, that's a temptation for us. Watch out for the dogs. Don't act like a dog. Third, Christ matters most. And what Paul does, we'll see there's like a, a pivot or a fulcrum. There's like a, a, a switch over, like a kaboom. It just goes from don't act like a dog. Don't put your confidence in the flesh because Jesus matters most. And, and, and compared to Christ, everything else is complete rubbish. Fourth, fourth point today, therefore, we focus on knowing Christ more. And when we get that right, everything else flows from that. So uh, point number one, watch out for the dogs. Watch out for the dogs. You see verse, uh, verse two, watch out for those dogs, evildoers, mutilators of the flesh, because it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, who have put no confidence in the flesh. I want you to notice what Paul is doing here is he's making a uh, kind of a list of two categories. On the one hand, there's the dogs, the evildoers, the mutilators of the flesh. On the other hand, there's the circumcision, um, the real circumcision, the ones who serve God by his spirit, boast in Christ and put no confidence in the flesh. What, what Paul is really doing is he's saying, look, everybody is in one of these two categories. We're either like the evildoers, the uh, flesh mutilators, the, the dogs. We're either saying, I'm awesome because I am so good at what I do. Or we're on the other side, and on the other side we're saying, I am so glad what, of what God has done for me. I want to I wanna look a little bit closer at this because I want you guys to see the difference. Fakers, I'm going to call them fakers. We can call them dogs. This is the, 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 the posers, uh, the dogs. They're, they're, they're out to get you, right? This is why Paul, in the very beginning, he's like, uh, rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to write to, a, again to you the same things. It's no trouble for me. It's safe for you. That's verse one. Why? Because there's dogs out there. And you know what dogs do? They're, they're out there. These are like wild dogs. They would have um, destroyed like your garbage can. They would have attacked people. Uh, Paul is saying there's dogs out there who are trying to mess with your faith. You ever think out there in the world, you look on Facebook or, or, or TV, there's these people who want to lure you away from the real truth of Jesus Christ. Second, evil workers. And, and evil workers, what, what's really interesting, right? So all three of these, they're, they're, they're deceptions on the truth, perversions of the truth. We think about dogs. I have a dog I love. Maybe you have a dog you love and you're just like, how could, I, how could I think my dog's a bad thing? Well, there's really good dogs and there's really bad dogs. And the, the thing is that maybe there's a good dog, but what Paul's talking about is the bad one. So you think maybe it's good. It's not really. Evil workers, if you went to Matthew chapter 22, what you would see in, in verses 23, 24, 25, 26, uh, Jesus is talking about the Pharisees, the hypocrites. And he says, woe to you, Pharisees. Um, woe to you, Pharisees. Hypocrites, you clean the outside of the cup and the dish. Right? Jesus is like, you look all pretty on the outside. You're all dolled up, man. You, you've got your face on right. And he says, but inside is full of extortion and, and bad stuff. So um, evil workers don't look evil. When Paul writes about all of these, the reason the Philippian church needs to be warned is because it's, it's, it's because the evil people look like good people. They put on their fancy suit. They put on their vest. They put on their bow tie. They're like, I, I got it going on. And you never notice that they're really evil workers. Then self-mutilators. And I, I, I want to I I show you something with self-mutilators. It's actually a play on words. So there's the real circumcision. If you look at the text, he says there's the mutilators of the flesh is a play on words with the circumcision. So mutilators of the flesh and circumcision, both of them are just one word in the Greek. And mutilators of the flesh uh, means to chop something off. Circumcision means to cut around. And so what Paul is doing here when he says the mutilators of the flesh, he's like, there's some guys out there that say they've been circumcised. He's like, they might as well have just cut the whole thing off. It's really actually quite graphic the way he's saying it. He's saying the real circumcision, they've cut carefully around. Um, why is this important? Again, Again, they, they act like they're really following Jesus Christ. But what they've done is they've thrown the baby out with the bathwater. They've completely annihilated what circumcision means of dedication to the Lord and separation from the world. And they've made it just this outward act. My, my question with this for us is, is quite simply, do, do we sometimes act like dogs or 
evildoers or flesh mutilators? I mean, like, if you're to evaluate your life or I'm to evaluate my life right now, are there things that I do so I look like a Christian? And maybe other people think that I'm a Christian, but really my heart is full of corruption and blackness and darkness. And my challenge for you, friend, is that if there's things in your life that make you more like a dog, an evil worker, or a self-mutilator, today's the day to change. And the flip, the opposite, is that real believers, right, instead of fakers, they worship in the Spirit, they glory in Christ Jesus, and they put no confidence in the flesh. And the way it works is, is like that. First, worship in the Spirit. Uh, when we think about church, right, I, I said in the, the announcements, what we want is we want to have an amazing place of worship. Do you, do you know what that looks like on Sunday morning is that Pastor Jerome is going to do his best to play music with excellence. And all of the worship team with him are going to be as amazing as they can be because God is worthy of that kind of excellence. And when we do our videoing and our sound and when we do our Sunday school and all of our church, all of this, we want it to be the best possible, like excellence in every, every sense of the word. But listen, if we're not worshiping in the spirit, in spite of our physical outward excellence, it means nothing. It's what the fakers do. Um, second, we glory in Christ Jesus. Do you know the, the false teachers, the fakers, the dogs, the evil workers, they go and they look and just Matthew 22, they clean the outside of the dish. And they're like, look how cool I am. Well, Jesus, Jesus thinks we need to glory in him. In other words, uh, when you leave church today or when you're done watching today, hopefully you leave thinking, man, we serve an awesome and just glorious God and Savior, Jesus Christ, not, not thinking we've got a great pastor, um, although I hope you think that too. Uh, third, right? Put confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. So instead of, instead of being a self-mutilator, somebody who's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut my flesh just so people think I'm holy. Well, a, a real believer says uh, just the opposite, right? I'm, I'm holy. And if I'm holy, if I'm living for Jesus Christ, my flesh is of secondary importance. Like in the Old Testament, they, they were circumcised because their heart was right with Jesus, right? Because they loved God and they wanted to truly worship him, that outward action showed what happened in the inwardness of their hearts. It's the same for us, right? Like, like baptism, we don't, we don't get baptized because that saves us. Like baptism doesn't save. We, we get baptized because something's already happened inside of us and we say, I want the world to know. And so there's this outward confession of our faith. We go into the water. We unite with Christ that way. We come up out of the water in union with him. It's his righteousness. No confidence in my flesh. And so the question, right? If, if for the fakers, my question for you is, are you acting like a dog? Then for here, it's, hey, are you acting like a real believer? When you came to worship this morning, is it in the spirit to glory in Christ with no confidence in the flesh? Right? If it's not, we, we change. And if it is, we continue to celebrate and glory in and praise God for what he's doing. So uh, second thing, right? not only do we watch out for dogs, but we shouldn't act like a dog. And I, I like the way, the way Paul does this because he's just, man, he's just so upfront. Uh, and, and when we put this together, I think we get it because what's going on is Paul is saying, um, church, there's some guys out there that they look like just, man, bang up Christians. And they look like they're doing just an amazing job. And we want to follow them because of what they look like. And Paul says, hey, by the way, if anyone has been there, I've been there. And, and what I really love about this, and I think we need to understand and, and just kind of get, is that Paul is, he's using his personal testimony. He's saying, I was the guy that thought he had everything right in his flesh. Like, like if anybody had anything to hold on to or say, I am good because of what I am doing for God, Paul says, I'm that guy. And it mattered for nothing. Uh, the, the reason I think Paul tells us and the reason I'm telling you about all of this is because it, it's easy, y'all, for us to fall into this. It's easy for us to sit there and start to name all of the ways that we have served Jesus Christ and how we think that because of all of these things, we're somehow super saints. So, so check out what Paul says. He's like, if anyone else thinks they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, like if you think you have reason to boast, I have more. Look at what he says. I'm circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, for, uh, as for zeal or persecuted of the church, that's number six. Number seven, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. 
Seven things make Paul just look like a super saint. Um, check it out. Before Christ, Paul relied on these things. Circumcision, rituals, right? Like he was, he was, he was circumcised. You know what, what, what else it says about Paul? He had good parents, right? Like this is the first three things. One, two, three, boom. All of these are things that happened to Paul. They're things that were done to him. He was circumcised. He participated in the rituals. He had good parents. It's like, listen, maybe your parents, like, like me for my kids, all of my kids have been in church their entire lives. They've been Baptist nine months before they were born. They love Jesus. They know nothing apart from what it's like to grow up in a church that loves them and cares about them. And that's Paul, right? Do you know what that did for his salvation? Nothing. Is it a good thing? Yeah. Second, birthright, his race, his heritage. Do you, do you see what he says? He's like, uh, if anyone else thinks they have confidence, I have more circumcised. I'm of the people of Israel. So he's Israel. He's, he's a Jew, a real Jew. People think this means he's saying, I'm a, a, I'm a pure-blooded Jew, not, not like Timothy. Remember, he just talked about Timothy, and he talked about Epaphroditus, and he talked about these guys like Timothy's father was a Greek, not Paul. Man, Paul had the right race, the right heritage. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. He had a high rank in society. The tribe of Benjamin is one that stayed faithful to God when Judah and Israel separated. Um, Paul is like, I am Israel. I am of the tribe of Benjamin. I know where I came from. Uh, it's It'd be like today, somebody saying, you know what? I'm, I'm a third or fourth generation pastor, and my, you know, I don't remember a time in my life when we didn't serve Jesus in my family. Uh, it, th this is Paul, first three things. This is what he relied on. And the reason these are important is because sometimes we're tempted to rely on the same things, uh, but they don't get us to Christ, right? Then the next four things, numbers four, five, six, and seven, I, I want you to really hone in on these because these are things that Paul did for himself, and so when I look at my life or you look at yours, this is it. Like there's some things in my life that, that I've been given that other people have done for me. And those things, maybe they make me feel like I have some extra rights in life. There's other things that I've done in my own life, right? Like I've pulled myself up by my bootstraps. I think I've earned my place. That's, that's the second half. Hebrew of Hebrews. He kept the traditions. So not only did his parents teach him, but when he graduated high school, he didn't leave the church. He stayed, right? That's what he's saying. I am, um, as for a keeper of the law, I'm a Pharisee. He's one of the religious elite. It's like, um, th this would be like saying, I went to seminary. I really know about God's word. This is like, you know, it's a good thing to know about God's word. That doesn't make you any closer to God. Uh, even the demons believe in God and they shudder. Then um, number, number six, as to a, a persecutor of the church, right? He worked hard for God. We, we think sometimes Paul persecuting the church, it was just evil. Paul did that out of a sense of righteousness, right? Paul didn't know Jesus, and he saw people he believed were blaspheming against God, and so he says, I am going to kill or persecute those guys because they're disrespecting God Almighty. Uh, he, he persecuted the church. That's, that's intense, y'all. He worked hard hard for the gospel. And then seventh, he was blameless. He was legally righteous. Uh, that's, that's the guy saying, I have never done anything wrong in my life. It's, it's the guy who can stand up and say, I've not, I've not cheated on my wife. I've not gotten drunk. I've not done this or that. Or like, I've always been a good little boy. That's Paul. So why, why does this matter? Because before Christ, Paul relied on rituals, his heritage, his rank, his traditions, his religious elitism, his hard work, and his legally righteousness stuff. Uh, my question for us is, what's your confidence in? Right? Like if we go back to this list and we just think about all of these things, which of these things do I sit here or do you sit there and just think, huh, I'm pretty righteous because I know where my parents came from. I, I'm pretty righteous because I know I worked hard. Uh, this is the this is, this, is, this is what we really need to think about. Uh, where, where, where's my confidence? And, and I really think that there's a temptation for each of us to put our confidence in things of the flesh instead of things of the Spirit. We, we like to think maybe that, that we're better because we've been in church longer or we've been Baptist longer 
or we, we taught a Sunday school class or went to seminary or whatever, but listen, what, what's your confidence in? Uh, Paul, says, Paul says that our confidence need to be, needs to be in Jesus Christ because Christ matters more. And, and so here's, here's the way it plays out to get us here. The, the first point, right, the first point is that we need to watch out for dogs. Watch out for those people who are going to pull you away from Jesus Christ. Second point, don't be like those people. Don't be a dog. Don't put your confidence in your flesh. Third, why? Because Christ matters most. And, and I, want you to see, I want you to see the way Paul does this. He says, whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. And I, I want you to, man, I want you to just think about this. This is like the, the pivot point, right? Before this, it's all about how good I can be all on my own. After this, it's all going to be about how great I am because of Christ in me and the righteousness I have from Jesus. Now, I want you to notice about this just a few things. First, all of the stuff about Paul, that it's good stuff. Just, just, I mean, get that mom and dad, love your kids and teach them about Jesus and instill in them values of church and serving and going and missions and excellence in worship. But work hard to instill all of those things into your children, but make sure they know Christ matters most. Christ is the goal. And so what, what, uh, what Paul is saying is compared to Christ, everything else I, I count as a loss. Um, he says, for the sake of Christ, I have lost all things. I consider them as garbage that I may gain Christ. And what Paul is really doing is he's, uh, he, he, he's just saying, Christ is so much better, nothing else matters. My heritage doesn't matter. My job doesn't matter. My education doesn't matter. None of that is going to save me, only Jesus. Like, it's important, it's good, it's good stuff, only Jesus saves. And uh, by the way, like tidbit, this is kind of just fun information. This word garbage, garbage isn't actually the word that's used here. Earlier, Paul was really graphic in his language. He said, cutting around is circumcision. The dogs, they just top it all off. Here he says, everything else compared to Jesus Christ, it is just, um, if you read King James, it says dung. D-U-N-G, dung. It is scat. And specifically, this kind is used of dogs. <laughs> and so here's the play on words. What Paul is saying is, watch out for the dogs, the evildoers. Watch out for the mutilators of the flesh because all of those works they have, it's the exact stuff that comes out of the rear end of a dog. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I think that's hilarious. And uh, that's uh, strong language. The reason it's important that we see the strong language is because it emphasizes that Christ matters most. And so fourth, then, if Christ matters most, what we focus on is knowing Christ. So, so again, the, the, the fourth point we're at now. So first, we watch out for dogs. Watch out for dogs because they will pull you away. They'll attack you. They'll destroy you. When you're watching out for them, don't become like them, right? Like it is so tempting for us to look at the world and say, they've got it going on, man. We want to we wanna be like those guys. And then we we fall into it. We slide into it. We don't even know. And so uh, watch out for dogs. Don't be like a dog. Understand third, third point, understand that Jesus matters most. And, and compared to Christ, everything else is complete rubbish or, or garbage. And if, if that's true, because it's true that Jesus matters most, what do we do? We, we focus on knowing Christ. And uh, the, the words here, I, I like it, right? Uh, he says, and be found in him, that's be found in Christ, not having, listen, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law. Do you notice he's, he's making this difference? There's, there's the law, but that which is through faith. So is your righteousness from keeping the law, from all this stuff, or is it through faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith? What, what Paul is saying is there's two ways to live your life. Your works or the works of Christ for you on the cross, imparted by faith. Uh, the, the, the difference is quite stark, right? If I'm relying on the works of the law, if I'm relying on what's happening in my own life or what I can do, I, I'm never going to be good enough. Never going to be good enough. But if I rely on Jesus Christ, he's always good enough. This is, uh, this is the me message of salvation. Like, if, if you're listening uh, today, 
God brought you here for a reason. And maybe part of the reason is that you're putting a lot of, a lot of your confidence in your flesh. And you sit there and you think you're watching at home or, or you're joining us in the morning and you're, you're, you're just sitting there thinking, man, I, I, uh, I'm a pretty righteous dude. Like I'm, I'm better than most other people. And maybe you are, but if you were going to stand before God today, would you really be able to hold up or stand up to his holy, righteous, perfect standard? Could you really know before God that with absolute certainty you've never lied, you've never stolen anything, you've never lusted after another person, you've never disrespected your mother or father, you've always been perfect. And if you can't, if you can't stand up that holy, righteous, perfect standard, then you need Jesus Christ who died on the cross in your place. This is the righteousness that does not come from my own, does not come from the law, but it's the righteousness through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Paul, then he says, I want to know Christ. Like, of all the things, isn't it great? Of all the things that Paul lists, he's like, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews of the tribe of Benjamin, circumcised on the eighth day. I'm a persecutor of the church. As to the law, I am blameless. But what I really want is to know Jesus better. I, I, I think that we could all do with a little bit of knowing Jesus better. And when we know Jesus better, we know the power of his resurrection participate in his suffering. We become like him in his death. And so somehow, Paul says, somehow, like we can't even comprehend, but we attain the resurrection from the dead. There are four things through Christ we gain. First, we gain his righteousness, justification. Friend, if you would trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, right now, you would be justified. God would look at you and you'd be covered by the blood of the lamb. And instead of seeing your sin or your unrighteousness, he would see the perfectness of Jesus Christ. Righteousness of Jesus we gain. Second, we gain the power of the resurrection. Sanctification. Do you know that Jesus is giving you absolute power to be all that he wants you to be for this world? Right? Like we talk about excellence in worship. We talk about sharing our faith or planting churches or sending missionaries or any of this stuff. All of this stuff is possible because of Jesus Christ living in us, in you, in me, in the people in our church. We have resurrection power because of Jesus Christ. Third, um, suffering. I, I like the way, the way Paul is like, hey, we, we unite with Christ in his suffering and in his death. And it reminds me of baptism. In Romans chapter 6, Paul says that we are um, united with him in death, buried with him in baptism, to be raised again. Uh, this, is, this is a spiritual union and a, a really purposeful, physical, outward union with Christ. Listen, um, if you follow Jesus enough, close enough, there's going to be times when you suffer in the world because of that relationship. Spiritually, and second of all, with the suffering and union with Christ, we relate to him in death. This is our salvation. Instead of me dying, Christ died for me, and I relate with him in that death and that burial and to be raised again. So that fourth, through Christ, we gain resurrection. We gain glory with Jesus Christ. Um, resurrection we, we gain. Listen, this is what we look forward to. As much as we suffer and die with Christ, we're also united with him in resurrection to walk in a newness of life, to walk as a new man or a new woman, a new person before God Almighty, and we can live in ways we no longer thought were possible. And so all of that then, we watch out for dogs. We don't become like a dog. We understand that Christ matters most, and so we focus on Christ. All of this brings me to this question. Who's, whose righteousness are you relying on this morning? Maybe more pointed, we could say it this. Uh, who are you seeking to know this morning? Is it Jesus Christ, or is it something in the world? Focus on that and let God change your heart. Across the earth Across the earth
Singing 